each and every teacher who has joined us today uh, at 6.30 to actually participate in this session and uh, take charge of your own virtual classroom and also know more about what are the upcoming tech tools that you can actually incorporate in your teaching learning process. So are we all set? Are we all excited? Type excited if you all are excited in the comment section because I am. Come on, let me see the comment section flowing with the word excited. Excited, excited, come on, let's type in the comment section excited. Yes, great, let it, let it flow. So uh, one of the ways, you know, uh, why I am asking all of you to share this excited in the comment section is because uh, whenever we start our sessions, it's always a great idea. This is actually a strategy that I use. It's always a great idea to start with a share. So either you share a share or you do something which is called as waterfall in your chat box. So uh, the other day I was observing my son's classroom where the teacher was teaching and my son really wanted to chat out the answer that the teacher had asked somebody else. Now, in their classroom, there are certain rules which we, you know, they are supposed to follow. So he was, uh, the chat was disabled. He was not, you know, nobody, nobody is allowed to use the chat box. So he wanted to speak aloud the answer. So obviously the mic, he has to be on mute. He wanted to chat, but the chat is disabled. So in such a case, how is it that the learner can actually control their own urge to talk, to share, and also to, you know, let the teacher know that, okay, you know, I want to answer this. So uh, what, what, what I figured out is at, at this point in time, when the learners are really, really eager to share something and majority of them know the answer. So what you could do in your session, maybe, you know, when, when you have that kind of one minute to give to your learners, what you can do is something called as a waterfall or a chat bomb. So what you can do is you can ask your learners to be ready with the answer. So let's say a uh, simple thing like, what did you eat for your breakfast today? Just a share. You know, you want your learners to share with you and you want to kickstart the session. So a simple thing like, um, you know, how many of uh, us had a great day today? So now I want all of you to type in your chat box, but don't press the send button. All right. So just be ready with your answer. So I, I can. OK, this was a very general statement that I asked. How was your day today? So let me ask, um, uh, what did you eat for lunch today? All right. So type your answer in the comment section, but do not click on send. Now, when I'm going to say three, two, one, go. When I say go, that's the time you're going to hit the send button. And then you will see actually a waterfall of all the replies that your learners want to share with you. Now, why? Why this is because you don't have to read each and everything. And at the same time, your learners get to share and they also get to see the entire chat bomb or the waterfall that happens in the chat box and that gets them excited. So are we ready to do this uh, small exercise? Yes, are we ready? Okay, let's uh, get ready. Let's type what we ate for lunch today. I'm also gonna be typing that, but I'm not gonna press the chat uh, send button. So I type, uh, okay. I see some more members. Let me just admit them all. And here we go. So this exercise is called waterfall chat or chat bomb where we are going to type what we ate for lunch, but we are not going to hit the send button. Are we ready? I have typed mine. So three, two, one, go. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Now, do you see the waterfall of chat that's coming in? Oh, KFC chicken. I see KFC chicken somewhere written. <laughs> great, great. So this is what is a waterfall chat or a chat bomb where you see all your learners ready and the replies flowing one by one, one below the other. And it's just a fun activity to begin with because not necessarily you have to read each and everything. It just allows them to express themselves. And as educators, we all know how difficult it has got for us teachers to actually attend to our learners and allow them to express themselves. Do you believe that it has got difficult for us to do that as compared to the physical classroom? Yes. Type yes if you believe it has got difficult to pay attention and for the learners also to pay attention to us. It's both ways many a times. Absolutely. 
So this was chat bomb or a waterfall chat, which was one of the strategy that you can use in your virtual classroom when you're about to kickstart your session and you want to maybe just have a light chat with your learners before you kickstart the session. So this was about this exercise. There was someone who was asking me, so I'm just letting it out. So now, before we dive into you know uh, our, our session that I have planned for all of you, uh, it's going to be a 50 minute session followed by Q&A. And uh, what we're going to be doing here today is I'm going to be sharing uh, one, uh, two apps with you. And uh, those apps which I have selected today are meant for all grade learners. So I have kept that in mind. So even the teachers who are, you know, from early years to, you know, uh, controlling impulsivity. Yes, Ms. Gita. Yeah. So this uh, session is planned, keeping in mind that all educators right from early years to high grade levels can actually incorporate the apps and uh, the strategies that we're going to be sharing today. Now, uh, let me share my screen with all of you and uh, let us get started with the session. Here we go. Okay, sorry. Just a moment. Okay, it's going there again. Just a moment. Parijan, get. Here it is. Okay, got it. Here we are. Yeah. So let us begin with today's session. I hope it is visible to everybody. And that was just a small activity that I shared. It was a strategy, which I just wanted to share the chat bomb strategy. And let us begin with today's session, Teach with Tech Made Easy with Rocky Chabria. Now, what we are gonna be doing is we're gonna quickly go through the first few slides before we dive deep into our session. So hello everyone, I'm glad that all of you have made time today because I'm equally excited to share with all of you what I want to share because, uh, EdTech is my uh, forte. This is something that I have been researching a lot, especially since the past one year. And I have also been noticing uh, how children or how our learners are able to engage so effectively with the use of uh, fantastic tools and apps that have come in, in the last couple of years, in the couple of years, and also how um, the, the learning process becomes so engaging for them, right? So let us move ahead. And believe me, you are at the right place. So a little bit about me, I'm Rakhi Chabria, I'm mother of two boys, founder of Teachers Help Teachers, a special educator, early childhood educator, and a technology geek. So the goal of our session is to turn chaos into clarity. I know there's a lot of information that's, being, uh, that's, that's available right now, uh, floating everywhere, too many webinars, too many tools, too many things to attend to. And as educators, we have so much of work that it becomes difficult for us to start research and actually understand how is it that uh, we can make use of different tools to make our teaching learning process interesting, right? So uh, here I am with uh, my research for all of you where the goal is to clear, uh, turn chaos into clarity, to cha take charge of our teaching sessions and uh, to increase our productivity by using tech. So how many of you believe that uh, by using tech in the classroom, we are not only helping our learners to interact, but we are also increasing our productivity. How many of you believe in that? Type yes, if you believe that yes, you increase your productivity and you save time. Yes, you save time. Absolutely. Technology is here to help us. It's not here to replace us. And it's about time that we as educators understand the right use of it and use it on a consistent basis in the right context, because that is something which will help us to engage on a, uh, uh, for a longer duration, right? So thank you for the comments. Keep them going. It will make uh, learners think, right? So moving forward, 
So the picture that you see of mine with Shell Sandberg, that was in way back in 2017 when Teachers Not Teachers was selected as uh, one of the effective community for uh, one of the community uh, for doing effective work in the field of education. So uh, that was uh, my most memorable moment where I met my uh, leader, uh, Cheryl Sandberg, and it was something which helped me uh, meeting her uh, helped me understand that, uh, you know, we as women, we need to lead and we need to, uh, you know, show the way for others to lead as well, right? So this was my memorable moment and I uh, always like to share that. So moving forward, the uh, mood meter. Now, this is another strategy when you are about to begin your session. So here is what you see in front of your screen is a mood meter. There are various words and color, which are color coded. We have, uh, you know, words in red, in yellow, in green, in blue. Now, what you need to do is you need to identify how you are feeling, whether, whether you are in the blue section, whether you're in the red section, yellow section, or green section. You could be even mixed. You could be feeling a little bit of blue and red or a little bit of uh, green and yellow. It could be even mixed. So now what I want you to do is just type down in the chat, in the comments section, where are you? Are you feeling blue? Are you feeling red, yellow, green? How is it? Because I know how overwhelming it is for educators to manage everything along with managing home. So let us hear from each one of you in which section are we? Are we blue? Are we green? Are we yellow? Are we a mix of all? It could even be that because it's absolutely okay to uh, feel uh, gloomy and uh, yet be high on energy. So, you know, there is a graph which shows that the words which are in red and yellow are high in energy, but low in pleasantness. And the words which are in green and blue are low in pleasantness and low in energy. So this is what the mood meter shows you, where you're able to understand how exactly your learners are feeling or your participants are feeling. So I can see that a lot of you are writing green, yellow, mix, mix, right? So yes, I go through all of them in the entire day. I go through blue, red, yellow, green in the entire day. And then, of course, uh, using some strategies and, you know, with some little bit of yoga and a little bit of exercise, I kind of get myself into the high energy and high pleasantness zone because we uh, all, uh, our learners need us and uh, a happy teacher uh, makes a happy classroom, right? So let us move ahead. And uh, as long as you know how is it that you need to move from uh, blue to green, from red to yellow. So that is more important as long as you're aware of the strategies to help you cope up and help you feel better to teach, right? So moving ahead, we have the next slide coming up where uh, the reason why I shared this blank slide with the bulb is because uh, many a times we feel that, you know, certain tools, practices are all right there in front of us. All we need to do is spend some time uh, do a little bit of research and, you know, identify which one will uh, be useful in our classroom, right? But what we fail to understand is that uh, when we are uh, in isolation doing our own research and trying to understand how that tool works, uh, we, we also need uh, someone to help us understand it, or we also need someone with whom we can try that too. And that's the reason why we have this community where we are together helping each other and uh, also letting each other know that which are the tools that you can actually get kick-started with. So yesterday I had shared a video on AutoDraw, which is the most simplest tool right from pre-K to K-12, anybody can use it. Now, the reason why I shared a simple tool was to let you know that, you know, with a little bit of guidance, it's all possible. And, uh, you know, the bulb moment goes on when, you know, someone like us is able to do it. So we get inspired when we see someone like us being able to do it. Right. So do you get inspired when you see your fellow educator implementing some cool strategy or some cool tool in their classroom? Do you get inspired or do you get worried? Do you get inspired or do you get worried if you see someone, if your fellow educator is sharing something which is uh, awesome, which is out of the box and which is creative? You get inspired. Absolutely. You get motivated. Absolutely. So let us get motivated in our today's session. And once you pick up uh, a few strategies from here, please go and help your fellow educators who have not been able to attend this know more about it. So let us move ahead. Uh, nothing in life is to be feared. It's only to be understood. 
Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. So while I was reading the uh, comments in the WhatsApp section where I asked most, where I asked all of you to type, what is it? What is that one thing which stops you or, uh, you know, makes you uh, a little apprehensive about using tech? So many of you wrote that, you know, <clears throat> you don't have many ideas. You don't know, uh, you know, what is it that will be suitable for your learners. And uh, also you fear a little bit about going wrong because uh, right now we all are exposed. We all are not only in front of our learners, but also in front of their family members. So I can imagine the kind of pressure. So all this is absolutely fine. And that's the reason why we have this community to support each other and learn together. So right now is the time to understand and not to fear because the more we fear, the less we understand and more the chaos. Yes, believe with the quote, type yes, if you believe with the quote. Yep. So the first tool that uh, I would like to share is um, the first strategy rather I would like to share is that uh, as educators, um, there is something called as open-ended creation tool that we need to incorporate in our lesson plans. Now, you might have, uh, you might have seen my video yesterday, which I shared, uh, and it was also shared in the WhatsApp uh, group today about uh, AutoDraw. Now, what was AutoDraw? AutoDraw was nothing but it's an open-ended tool. It's, it's a creation tool. So what is happening is as educators, we are, um, you know, we, we curate a lot of information which we want our learners to understand. So uh, how much information can one actually consume? So we need to balance our classroom in a way that we are not only helping them consume the information, but we are also helping them create something using their own information, right? So open-ended creation tools are a must in our virtual classroom, especially, uh, you know, when we are doing topics uh, like uh, history or uh, even geography, for that matter, all, all subjects, it's a must, but especially for topics which can get a little dry or a little boring where there's a lot of information that needs to be shared, right? So uh, open-ended tools help the learners to decide uh, what they want to express and where they want to go. For example, it could be a podcast, it could be a jam board, a jam board it could be an ebook, it could be, uh, it could be, there are many other tools. So I have identified one such open-ended tool to be able to show. And that is one of my favorite tool because uh, my voice is echoing. Is my voice okay for everybody? I just got a message saying my voice is echoing. Okay, all right, thank you. So maybe you can log out and log in. So, uh, here I am going to be presenting one tool that is that can be used again from pre-K to K-12 and that is one of my favorite tools that I use and let us go ahead and look at that tool. So before we select that tool, what is it that we need to consider, right? So we need to consider that the tool that we are going to be presenting needs to be device uh, compatible. Why device compatible is because uh, our learners are using different notebooks. Somebody is using a Chromebook, somebody is using Mac, somebody is using Windows. So we all are on different operators uh, of a platform, operating platform. So we need to select an app that is compatible with all devices. Otherwise it can lead to frustration. And we also need to understand that uh, whether it's free or paid. So, or, or some of them are even freemium where a certain features are free and then the advanced features you need to pay for it. So, uh, and also some of the tools have certain trial periods where you can do only four exercises or five exercises, right? So you need to be doubly sure before you're implementing the tool, look out for these features, whether it's compatible, whether it's free, whether it's, uh, and uh, whether it can be used for anything for different topics and different projects, right? So do you believe in this principle that we need to be uh, doing our own research before we go ahead and try a tool, right? Okay, so here is my favorite tool. It's called Book Creator Tool. So now in this session, I'm not gonna be like uh, taking you through the tool and hand holding you. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm just gonna be sharing information and tips. And then of course, uh, in our future sessions, we can dive deeper into each and every tool that I'm gonna be sharing with you, right? So book creator tool. Now, what is a book creator tool all about? So uh, if you're in front of your desktop or um, you, know, you have your, uh, your browser, you can just type book creator. And book creator is what it looks like this. Now, this is what a book creator looks like. It has 
it allows the learners to create their own ebook. Can you imagine that? The amount of creativity, the amount of flexibility, and the amount of collaboration that your learner can actually engage in creating this ebook is amazing. So when you type book creator, you will see this dashboard, which you see right in front of me. I have taken a screenshot and I have attached it on the PowerPoint presentation where it will enable you to understand that this is the site that you need to visit. Now, uh, when you click on book creator, you will be prompted to create your account like any other website where you create your account, enter your details, and then you can create your own library. Now, when you have your own library, what you can do is you can add the subjects that you teach, whether you're teaching math, science, social studies, PE, whichever subject you're teaching, you create your classroom and then becomes then, then starts the magic. So let us move ahead. So this is how it looks. When I want to create a book of mine, this is the canvas that it shows. Now, when, when we are introducing any open creator tool, open creation tool to our learners, we need to be sure that uh, they can log into the account. It is easy for them to log into and make their accounts. And at the same time, the tool is not very complicated. So this tool, Book Creator, is a fantastic tool. It can be used by all learners. And this is the canvas that you see if you want to create your book. It says you can, uh, you can select templates which are already loaded. And as per the subjects that you want to create, it, it has all these features where you can create panels, you can have a speech bubble, you can have a thought bubble, you can have stickers, you can import your photographs and you can upload them into the book. You can also embed any file, any website that you want to embed into it, just like we do it in the Google slide. And this is all that it allows you to do. Now, you might be wondering that in order to use this tool, I would first need to understand how it works. So at the end of the session, maybe I can take you through the entire website and guide you through the tool before. Uh, but first, I would like to get done with all the tips, and then I can take you through the entire website of the Book Creator. The Book Creator is an excellent tool for letting your learners create, for letting your learners express creativity, to collaborate with their peer group and also to come up with something which is really really interesting so um, I have created a book uh, in my account where I have put in all the tech ideas together rather I'm creating it's almost about to finish and yes it works for all uh, desktops laptops tablet it's a free tool it's a wonderful tool and it's my humble request please, please, please do try this tool and let your learners also try. It's very simple. And uh, all you need to do is, you know, take cues. If you are not very creative, then what you can do is just select the ready-made template, make some changes, add a few photographs. It also allows you to select, uh, to search for pictures, uh, uh, to search for pictures within the site. So just like on Google slide, we can search for images. In this tool also, we can search for images within the site. So we don't need to have to go to Google, then copy that image and then come back into our book creator and store that image. So it's all in one a fantastic tool, tool. I would suggest after this session, all of you, the first thing that you need to do is go ahead, register yourself for this tool and start exploring this tool, right? Now, uh, this is one of the example of an open creation tool where it allows your learners to think and express. So for example, if, if you have done your history session and you want your learners to actually create eBooks on uh, you know, maybe the freedom fighters, or you know, maybe you can select groups and ask them to create uh, eBooks on different freedom fighters, or maybe they can be asked to create uh, eBooks on a topic of their choice. So uh, th this also becomes very uh, important for assessment. It also serves as an assessment tool because you get to understand what the learner is actually thinking, or what what is it that uh, what is it that the learner is wanting to research upon? What is the topic chosen by the learner? What is the kind of work that the learner effort and work that the learner has put into it? So you can see it all. I'm going to be showing you this website as well towards the end. So it's a fantastic tool. Go ahead, try it. Now I would like to know from uh, all of you if y'all are using any open ended creation tool in your classroom. So I just shared example of Book Creator, and I also shared an example of the tool AutoDraw, uh, which I shared on WhatsApp. So any open 
open-ended creation tool that you as an educator, are you using any open-ended tool in your classroom? It could be any tool, not necessary book creator and auto draw that I just showed. It could be any tool if you're using Padlet and Jamboard. Excellent. Jamboard is fantastic. Even Google Drawing Board. So it is similar to Jamboard. Google Drawing is similar to Jamboard. Neopod, Whiteboard, right, Padlet. Yes, all these are very, very essential to be used in our classroom. Mentimeter, I'm going to be coming to that as well. Yes, there is someone waiting in the room. Okay. Thank you. So yes, Padlet, Mentimeter. Anybody tried Tingling out here? Tingling is also a fantastic open-ended creation tool. If you've not tried, maybe we can uh, you know, have a session. We've already had session, but we can have it once again. So thank you for sharing all the open-ended creation tools. Scribido, yes that you have been using in your classroom and uh, this book creator is one tool uh, which is a must must try for all of us right you've tried tingling yes so let us move ahead to the other strategy which is make video your friend so I think the amount of videos we as educators might have made in, made in the last one year I uh, I don't think we we might have even thought of making so many videos and you know doing on online teaching the way we are doing it. So why videos are important is because I have seen uh, you know so many teachers uh, struggling with uh, content in the live classroom because uh, sometimes you know the connectivity is not good. The learners also we are not able to understand if the learners are actually getting engaged. Uh, there's a lot of disturbance within the online session uh, you know there are some students who want to talk uh, there are some of them who want to play a prank so there's there's a lot of uh, chaos which is already there and then it is also being created so wow you made 94 videos excellent so why videos are important is because uh, if you make videos and send it to your learners before or after your session then that helps as a recap and that also helps your your learners to identify and understand what is it that they're supposed to research upon. If anything needs to be done before they need to enter your session, this helps them to get engaged. So many a times, you know, we feel that, okay, we are going live with the learners. We don't have time to actually sit down and record, but there are many apps which are simple and easy to use. One of the apps that I use to create videos is InShots. I'm going to be typing it in the chat box. It's InShots. InShot is a very, very cool app. It is a free app. You can download it on your phone, on your laptop. It allows you to record videos, to edit your videos, to add captions, stickers, uh, music, and it, it may, helps you to be as creative as you want your video to be. The second one that I also would recommend is Flipgrid. How many of you have used Flipgrid? Type yes if you have used Flipgrid. Yes. Have you used? Have you been using? Because if you're using Flipgrid, you will come to know about the latest edition, which is called Shots. Yes. So the latest edition is Shots, where you can record, where your learners can record videos. They can add, again, effects, stickers. They can hide their face with a sticker or uh, with an emoji. They can, they can be creative. And all this all this video, you know, in InShots, I need to show the video in my phone or in my laptop to be able to share it. But in Flipgrid, all I need to do is hit the button, record the video, share it in my Google Classroom or share it with my teacher as an assignment. I don't need to store it in my phone because it is it has cloud storage. So that is the advantage of having uh, of selecting an app which allows your learner to use it without having the uh, uh, you know, without having to store it in their phone or in their, yes, it's shots, it's Flipgrid. You go to Flipgrid and in that you will be able to see shots, which is the new feature that has been added. Not, not really new, yes, but it has been added. It was not there in July, but yeah, it's been added maybe like three months ago. So that is something that I want all of you to try. Make video your friend. Record videos, edit them if you wish to. If not, the, the, the time for your learners to listen to your video can be anywhere between uh, three minutes to 10 minutes, but not more than that, right? So moving ahead is, we had uh, InShots, we shared about Flipgrid, now moving ahead, 
is our next use annotations. Now, what are annotations and why do we use annotations? Now, we all know that, in fact, when I was using Zoom right at the beginning, you know, uh, there used to be uh, some children who would actually start drawing using annotation and I would get disturbed. And that's where I realized that, okay, you know, it's, it's not something that, it's a, it's a new feature and it's something that I need to engage those children to, to actually use it in the correct way, annotation. So uh, another tool which I use, uh, so there are many tools which allow you to annotate your text or your PDF or your, you know, site. Um, there are many extensions, there are many tools. So one such extension that I use in uh, my sessions is uh, Digo. Now, what does Digo do? Now, Digo is, again, a cloud-based application. It's an extension. You can go to Chrome Store and download Digo. Now, what does Digo do? It allows you to annotate any website. It allows you to share that particular website with your learners. It allows you to bookmark that particular website in just like how you bookmark websites on your laptop. But the advantage of Digo is along with uh, you know, playing around with the text where, for example, if all the students are reading aloud in the classroom and you have a text which is put up right in front of the screen and all the learners are expected to look at it and read it. So what you can do is with the help of Digo, which is an extension, you can highlight the text which you want to highlight. You can add a sticky note so that uh, your learners are prompted to think more about it. You can also add definition of words which you feel that you know may be difficult for some of your learners to understand what the context is. So Digo is one such extension. You can download it. If you're on Chrome, you can download it right away. Otherwise, you can go to your Chrome browser. If you're using Mac, you, you can go to your Chrome browser and download this extension called Digo. It is a website tool as well as an extension tool. And again, it's an amazing tool. I would recommend all of you to go ahead and try Digo, which is going to help you share text, annotate text, let your learners annotate the text, add their own thoughts in the form of sticky notes and make the process of reading enjoyable rather than uh, a process where you know everyone is doing what they are doing and we don't know what's happening because we are in the virtual world right now. Yes? So, can all this not be done on Google Classroom? What cannot be done on Google Classroom? The annotation, the annotation can of course be done, but this is especially when you're sharing text matter. And also when you want to save a particular file, or let's say you're doing research with your learners and you come across maybe 10 files which you want to share with your learners. So Digo helps you to save them in your folder and share that folder with your learners. It helps you to create groups and share your folders with groups or, or with learners. And also to understand that all this, you don't need to do it. You, it's cloud-based, so you don't have to actually store it in your laptop. It saves space for all of us. Yep. So we're going to be probably trying it out, uh, first-hand experience after we are done. Now we move on to the next, which is join the Teach with Tech Club. So I'm going to get get to that uh, after we have our session after we have uh, after we have visited the site that we just spoke about so uh, when we talk about uh, book creator or when we talk about i'm just going to stop the screen share yeah so when we are talking about book creator or when we are talking about uh, the annotation extension which i just showed now there are many others which are there there are many extensions there are many other apps there are many other tools but some of the tools which i feel are some are uh, compatible in terms of the principle are free and also uh, something that can be easily used by our learners is what i have shared today now if you want to go and try the tool so we can try with the which one do you want to go ahead and try first which one do you want to go ahead 
Do you want to go ahead with Digo or do you want to go ahead with Book Creator? You want to go ahead, let's take a vote. Come on, Digo, Book Creator. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead with Book Creator first. I'm just going to be taking a moment to do that. Give me a moment to do that. Here it is. So this is the book creator app or the website that I am on to. I'll just move this down, yeah. Now, I have created something which I was trying to create and I selected a ready-made template. I deleted some of the pictures which I did not want and I added pictures. I have my, I have, I added my text. I also embedded a website out here and this is what I did. And then if you were to click ahead, it just moves like a book where you are able to see everything, uh, information about you know, what you want to share with your learners, uh, headings that you want to add. Now, this is something that I'm trying to create and I'm trying to complete it. Now, what you need, what you can do is you can become a book creator certified author. They have their own short course which helps you to understand what the tool is all about. I have already taken that and it has really helped me a lot in uh, understanding more about the tool and how is it that we can actually make it more creative for our learners. So you can become a book, uh, book, book creator certified author by going into their certification course, which is a self-paced course. You can you know, go through the modules. There are, there are short capsule based modules. You can go through them and complete this book create a certified author course. Then when you land on your teacher dashboard after you have made your account, this is how your dashboard will look like. You can have, uh, you can select elementary, middle school, high school, any grade that you're teaching. And then there are some examples out here on the top that you will see, go through them. My favorite one is this one, Creative Digital Citizenship. It's got some awesome content and I think it's a must to actually uh, let our learners know about what is digital citizenship and what are the pros and cons. So you can go through this and you can go through many other uh, uh, examples that have been shared. And then of course they have their own wonderful library. As you can see, as I scroll down, these are some of the books that are already created. All you, all you can do is select one. And if you want to edit that, you can edit that or if you, if you want to create your own, then of course you're free to create your own. So these are some of the books which are made by learners themselves. Themselves. So my math shapes I can make more or less. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this tool is because uh, today the learners in our, uh, you know, the, the way we started teaching with um, overhead projectors and chalk in our hand, it's no longer the same today. So uh, things have moved ahead. It's, 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 it, the entire world has changed and, and we need to be really uh, present in front of our learners, uh, apps, tools, strategies, which will get them excited, which will get them to uh, actually start work and also to think, right? And engage, of course. So this is one tool which does it all. It allow, also allows you to collaborate and once you are done, you can just share it. There's a share button out there. You can share it in your Google Classroom. You can even, uh, you know, enter a full screen mode and present it to, uh, you know, in front of your learners if you have made something. So it's got all the features and it's all in all tool that I would suggest all of you to try. Now, there is this wonderful article that I found uh, pretty impressive. There is this uh, 60 year old where I was reading about it and, uh, you know, the 60 year old who created this uh, book and uh, it just shows that age is no bar for using any tool. It's, it, it depends on how you use it and for what you use it, right? So uh, this, is an, uh, this is a good article. I can share the link in the chat box. Maybe all of you would uh, be interested in reading, can do so. And okay, where did my screen go? Here it is.
Okay, yeah, sorry. So you can share, I, I can share this link, you can go read. And of course, the more you read, the more ideas you will get about how do you use this tool with uh, creating something interesting with your learners. So how many of you feel excited about this tool? Type yes, if you feel excited about this tool. How many of you are gonna be trying this tool and how many of you feel excited about this tool? Yes, type yes, if you feel excited about this too, because I really felt excited. We, we created uh, some content, we deleted it, then we again created it. And it's, it's been a journey for all, us as well, where we are trying to understand. So uh, yeah, absolutely, overwhelmed, yes. So this is a definite tool for all of us to try with our learners in our classroom. The uh, IB schools are already using it and it's, it's a tool which even the kindergartners are using it. So please go ahead. Uh, and try this too. Now, next is, of course, the Digo library that I was talking about. Now, this is my library where I have saved all the sites that I was visiting, I was working upon, and here it shows in the library. So now when you go into your Digo account, what it can do is, here it is, mm, my library, and uh, yeah. So let's say if I want to, I go on a site and I click on Animal Kingdom. And let's get to an article so that we understand how it works. So maybe I can click on the first one. Let us understand how this extension is going to work and how is it going to look when we are going to be presenting it. I click on it, I go to my extension, I enable the extension, and now it gives me these options, whether I want to save this file, whether I want to read and annotate. If it's a PDF, then you can even annotate the PDF straight away. You don't need to download it and convert it to be able to highlight it. So all these options are out here. You can even share it. Now, what I want to do is I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit and search for some text. Okay, let us go to the other side. This seems to be a site where it is a park, right? Now, if I am on Wikipedia and I wanna know more about what I'm reading or I wanna show my learners, I wanna highlight something, I wanna ask them something, I, wanna, I want them to dive deep into uh, you know, this particular paragraph that we are just reading. So all I can do is, select this tool and then it gives me an option of which color do I want for the highlight, whether I want blue, I want yellow. And then I can also have a sticky note out here where I can add my input. Have you been to Animal Kingdom? So if I want them to read this before my session starts, then I can share this file or I can share this PDF in the Google Classroom. Now, when they open it, they're gonna see the highlight, they're gonna see the sticky notes, they're gonna see everything that I've highlighted that I want them to look at before we, uh, before we get together for the session, right? So this is a tool which allows you to do all of it while being online and not necessary, you have to save it and, and then do the editing bit. This is the bookmark, the red uh, the flag that you see, it's the bookmark. So if I say bookmark, it allows me to add a tag. Now, when I add a tag, this is what I can do. So if I'm researching, let's say the topic or the theme for the month is animal kingdom. So I can type the tag animal kingdom. Here is my theme. I can add a description. I can share to a group. Now, if you see out here, it allows me to share to a group provided I have created a group. So if I have few learners whose permission I have taken to create the group, then I can create their group or else I can keep it <clears throat> private. Now you cannot see any group because it's not there. So here it is, read later, or you can just remove the private, private uh, unbox it and save it. Here it is. Now, when you save it, it'll show in your library that you have saved this Animal Kingdom's website because you want your learners to look at it. Now, this is what it does. It allows everything to be stored in folders. So whether they are websites or whether they are files, all of them can be stored in folders with the right tags 
and all of them are shareable with your learners. And even for your own research, when you are probably doing some research, it allows you to organize all your sites or your files that you have just been visiting on a regular basis to do your research. So this is what it helps you to do. It helps you to increase your productivity by bringing in everything together and organizing it and uh, letting it uh, also uh, allowing you to share it with your friends, colleagues, or learners, right? So this was about Digo. So how many of you found this tool helpful to increase your productivity? And also when you are reading on a daily basis, it is going to definitely help you in organizing. How many of you found this useful? You can type useful. Helpful, useful, you're going to be using it. Interesting, yes. So like I said that there are many other tools, but this one is free. It offers a variety of features. Uh, many of them uh, help us to only annotate the text, but this one helps us to also include a sticky note, include the annotation, include the, the sharing, the bookmarking, and it's all in one tool, right? So this was about uh, Digo. I can also share about Flipgrid. So Flipgrid Shorts, here it is. It's short, sorry. I, I, I typed in as shots. So Flipgrid Shots, here it is where you can go. This allows your learners to record videos. Maybe you have, you want them to, uh, for assessment, formative assessment purpose, you want them to send you a video, upload a video. So this is where you can ask them to go. I, many of the schools have Flipgrid accounts and I've also purchased licenses of the Flipgrid account. You can uh, definitely, if you find this tool useful, you can go back to your uh, principal, ask them to uh, maybe buy this tool, purchase the license and use all the advanced features. So when you click on shots, it's gonna help you to, it's very simple. All you got to do is, here it is. You see, record a shot. So here it goes. You can record a shot. And because I am using the camera, I think it will not be shown. Oh, here it is. So I can record a shot. And uh, hi, everybody. This is Raki Chabria. And I'm the founder of Teachers Help Teachers. And I love uh, helping teachers make learning simpler. So. Here it is. I can add stickers. Just take this box away. Yeah. I can add the uh, frames to my video. So maybe I want to add some frame like Animal Kingdom. Here it is. Or maybe I can add some effects, text, filters, stickers. Stickers, why? If I don't want to show my face, then this is what I can do. I can cover my face. And here it is. I can make it enlarge it, or I can even make it smaller. And here it is. So you can record it. And then all you got to do is share it in your Google Classroom. Or you can even share it in your uh, email to your learners where you want them to view something. And then you also want them to record and upload their own. So this is Flipgrid. It is a very, very simple tool. Uh, you, you have to have your learners uh, registered on Flipgrid to create the video. And as I said, it is a cloud-based uh, platform. You don't have to store it anywhere. You just record it, it's ready, and you share it. So just hit the record button, and there it goes. It will record whatever you want to say, and then you can just share it with your learners. So this is Flipgrid Shots. Along with InShots, you can also have Flipgrid Shots, which I can type out here. Here is Flipgrid Shots. You can have a look at it. So this was all about teaching with tech, understanding how easy it is to be able to, I'll just stop my screen share. Here it is. All right. So this was about teaching with tech, where the whole idea is to explore and research upon tools which can be used easily across all grades by a uh, majority of the learners, and also something which will uh, help uh, create that excitement and also make our learners more engaging. Now, what we can do is we, as a, please advise games to use, superb, right. So games, yes, I'm coming to that as well. So there are a lot of games, there are a lot of icebreakers. We have done a lot of sessions in the past as well for uh, to to help our educators in in terms of uh, 
you know, uh, the various tools along with uh, icebreakers and a lot of other things that uh, we've already done and we've, we've got those modules with us. So uh, the whole idea out here is not to just, you know, make everyone aware and then, you know, you log off and, you know, you, you kind of maybe go back to the tool or maybe you don't go back to the tool. But the whole idea out here is to bring everybody together and commit to taking action because there are a lot of loads of webinars happening. We all attend so many webinars. Uh, you know, we, we all uh, become aware of so many things, but how many of us are actually taking that one step forward, assimilating that information, getting time to do that, and then implementing it in our classroom. I know how difficult it is because when we uh, as educators are dealing with so many things, it becomes a little difficult to focus on the research you know, understand which are the new tools. Uh, what is it that I can do new, right? Like as you wrote in the WhatsApp group. So for to solve this problem where, you know, we do the research and we come up with tools and we dive deep into one idea every month. So we select one idea and we dive deep into that one idea where till the time we are not sure, we practice that for the entire month and we become pro at it. And then we move on to the next idea because there are many tools which we can use, especially for this entire year till 2021. And also for 2020, we had conducted a lot of sessions. So there are many tools which are new, which are going to keep coming. And uh, there are going to be many other ideas that we would love to share because we as a team do a lot of research. Uh, we also conduct sessions for schools. So in order to uh, take advantage, what what, uh, what we thought is to come up with Teach With Tech Club. Now, you might be wondering, what is this Teach With Tech Club? Now, to take you through that, I'm just going to be sharing my screen. Okay. I'm just going to charge my laptop. Just a So what is this Teach With Tech Club going to be doing and how is it that it's going to be helping educators? So let us understand this. Let me uh, share my screen with all of you. Just give me a moment to share my screen. Here it is. Okay. So this is what it's going to do. Let me present the screen. So join the Teach with EdTech Club. Now, who can join the Teach with EdTech Club and what is this club all about? So I've also created a Facebook uh, private group called the Teach with EdTech Club, where I want committed educators to be a part of it. Now, when I say committed, I don't mean that, to say that you all are not committed. What I mean to say is that when we have decided that we're going to be learning something and we are going to be implementing it, and uh, at the same time, also sharing the same with other educators. So that is the kind of commitment that I'm looking at. So in order to join the Teach with EdTech Club, what we thought is as a, as a team, we're gonna be coming up with one masterclass every month, right? We're gonna be sharing one big idea every month. There are gonna be no live sessions. The reason why there will be no live session is because it's very difficult for educators to manage uh, to come together at one particular time. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be recording the session. The masterclass is going to be recorded and it's going to come to you. Now, what you need to do is you need to study the masterclass at your own, uh, at your own pace. Look at it. Maybe, you know, you want to go through it a couple of more times, explore the ideas that are being shared in the masterclass. You can do that. Explore, dive deep into it, right? Then, you will be asked to send us questions about the tool, about the masterclass that you saw. So you will be asked, you will be given a Google form where you will be filling your questions and all those questions will come to us. So all those who are participating or who are a part of the Teach With Tech Club will receive the masterclass, will be required to study that, and then will be required to ask questions in the format of a Google form. When the questions come together, 
we will record the answers to those questions and again share the recording of that with you and once that is done we will come live together to understand how is it that we have used that tool in our classroom and what were the problems that we faced while using the tool or what are the other ways and ideas in which we can actually use those tools so this is what the teach with tech club is going to be doing it's going to be helping you all to save your time so we do the research we come to you we present a tool we expect you to study that ask questions and then we meet live and that date will be set for every month without a date and time will be set for every month so that everyone is aware and knows to make time for that right now what do you need to do is once you are a member of the teach with tech club you will get the master class every month you will have the doubt clearing session which will be again recorded then we will have a live session to exchange ideas there will be a pdf guide of that entire tool that will be given to you there will be of course tips and strategies which will be shared and there will also be certain bonuses that will be shared with all of you which will be uh, in a format of pre recorded sessions which you can view at your sweet time so that you don't lose out because i've realized myself that there are so many webinars where i have registered for but you know unfortunately i've not been able to be there on time and certain and some of them have recordings and some of them in spite of having recordings i've not been able to catch up so in order to avoid the chaos and bring in more clarity we're going to be following a system of format because when we have a system and when we have a format then of course we see the commitment and we also see the change coming in at a faster rate right now what you need to do to become <clears throat> a part of this is these are the bonuses that will be shared in the first month so we are going to be starting the teach with tech club membership from the next month that is <clears throat> the month of april and we will go right up till december till the year 2021 gets over so we will be sharing one big edtech idea every month with the members and every month we will be sharing certain bonuses or certain bundles that that will come to you which you can view and learn more about it so what you need to do is <clears throat> how to become a member is you can avail all the benefits that we have just mentioned by becoming a member and for this the membership fee per month is only 499 now you may say that okay you know i don't want to pay annually till 2021 december so what you can do is you can just pay till uh, you can you can become a member for a month try it out if you like it continue the membership if not then okay that's fine but what this club is going to be doing is it's going to expect you to create it's going to expect you to study it's going to expect you to come up and uh, when the live session happens come up and showcase ideas and also demonstrate how you use the tool so it's an exercise where you're going to be involved in it where you're going to be studying it and the tool and all the features experimenting with it and then of course going ahead and sharing that knowledge with your teachers in your school and other schools so this is what the idea of the teach with tech club is to help educators dive deep into this idea to become experts and then of course share that knowledge with everyone out there so this is what the teach with edtech club is going to be doing now who can be a part of this if you are an action taker if you are creative and like to experiment if you like to have an edge in your classroom then this edtech club is going to be helpful because as i said that you know you you get to save your time you get to uh, interact with like minded educators you get to be a part of the edtech community where we are always going to be coming up with new tools and strategies and also you will have access to videos and the bundles that we will be sharing every month so this is what the teach with edtech club is all about and of course now we will be uh, open to take questions but before i uh, open it to stop the screen and we move on to question and answer session this idea is uh, you know we've been conducting so many sessions uh, since lockdown and uh, we've been seeing so many teachers who have been taking uh, our courses teach with tech course uh, we've conducted teach with tech 1 teach with tech part 2 Uh, we've also conducted individual sessions and we've seen 
you know, uh, teachers who have become a part of it. But what we failed to see was the action. What we failed to see were uh, the ideas. Some of them, of course, shared a lot of it in the WhatsApp group that was created temporarily. And some of them, maybe because of the pressure, just faded away. So the whole idea is that when you are connected with like-minded educators and when you are committed to bring about that change in your classroom and to make your classroom interesting, then this club is going to work for you where we will be coming together every month to figure out all the problems that we go through while teaching with a particular tool. So this is the system that is created and this is the format that is going to be followed for all the educators who would like to be a part of Teach with Tech Club. So this is all about Teach with Tech Club. Now I'm going to be opening it to question and answer so you can ask me any questions in case you have any questions. I'm also going to be sharing the payment uh, link out here. So for those of you who would like to take action now, yes, for those of you who would like to take action now, right now, and become a part of the Teach with Tech Club, then this is something where you can avail of further discount. And we all saw that the membership fee for one month is $4.99. But if you want to avail of this offer right now and make payment right now, then you have a straight discount where you do not pay $4.99. You land up paying only $300 a month for the rest of the month or for just one month. So you can try. You can try us out. We are ready and we are all set with our research. And this is the offer for all those educators who want to take action now. Because as I said, that only we. Only if we are ready to take that action, only if we are ready to change and bring about a change, will we see the change in our classroom, right? So let me open it to, let me share the link with all of you in the comment section. And also let me open it to the participants so that everybody can start asking questions about the session, about the EdTech Club. Let me just stop the screen share. So this is my email ID, raki at teachershelpteachers.in. Uh, I've also started the consultation hours where I'm more than happy to interact with educators on a one-on-one -on -one basis to understand what is the difficulty and how is it that we at THT can help. So uh, in case you would like to book a consultation with us, you can send us a mail at raki at teachershelpteachers.in. It happens every Friday, four to six. So in case you or want to talk about, uh, you know, want to share some concerns or you're stuck somewhere or you want to just discuss it out, we are there every Friday, four to six, and help you out and also to get uh, together in this entire teaching learning process. So this, you can note down, you can take a screenshot and here it is. Let me stop my screen share and let me share my link with you. Here it is. So I have opened it up for the chat. You're unmute. You can unmute yourself. 